World War Three is officially on the horizon in the hip hop world. So apparently Drake has dropped his very anticipated response to Kendrick Lamar. And I did a live about this earlier, but I wanted to go in and get a little bit of a breakdown to it. And I got to say, I actually like the response. I didn't like the corny AI shit. I liked how it had a nice little tempo to it. Drake really put, he drug his writers out of the tent for this one. He told them niggas, look, y'all ain't getting no J's, y'all ain't getting no Netflix, y'all ain't getting no OVO sweatsuits until y'all write me something dope. <laughs> but man, man, I, I like the record because what I like about the record here is he seems more focused this time around and he was given... Not only smoke the Kendrick Lamar, but also Rick Ross, Future, ASAP Rocky, uh, Metro Boomin, you know the typical, Rick Ross, all them. They had some dope lines up there. I'm liking the, I, I did, I did a little breakdown about it earlier. But the line he said about ASAP Rocky was foul, man. I'm like, damn, he bodied ASAP Rocky before he even got in the ring. Like, this nigga got, it's like, you know, you running into a battle royal, and you getting drop kicked as soon as you get in the ring. <laughs> he drop kicked ASAP Rocky right out the ring before he even touched it. So, I'm going to give a little read down on some of this shit here. Now, hold on one second. I'm going to give y'all a little breakdown of some of the stuff. Mainly the stuff to Kendrick Lamar that I thought that was, um, that I felt was pretty, he had some good body blows. He had some nice shots up there. Because one thing I know about Drake is Drake personal repertoire is where he loves to go at people's women. I like some of the wordplay that he said here. Like he said, you acting like an activist and make believe but you won't even go to your own hood and plant money trees. I like that line. That's very clever. Because Kendrick had the hit song, Money Trees, off Good Kid, Mad City. Then he was talking about you you acting like an activist, like you acting like a savior for hip-hop, but you don't even go to your hood. You say you hate the girls I fuck, but what did that really mean? And hit, he said... I've been black and white and everything that's in between. You the black messiah to wifing up a mixed queen. Now, this is where the problems is going to rely. This is where this thing is going to really escalate for sure. And this is a problem that Drake always does. Because what he does is he loves bringing niggas, women, wives into conflict. And it gets personal from there. Then he goes and he said, you a dog and you know it. You just play sweet. Your baby mama captures always screaming, save me. You did her dirty all her life. You trying to make peace. I heard that one of the little kids might be day free. Don't make me day freeze. Now he's applying that one of those kids may not be his. Now we're getting nasty here. We're getting nasty here with this, with this here. Because Kendrick hit that nigga hard pause. In the morning with the disc record. So. He. Well he. Where well, he kind of took away some of the. The track where he was doing the tough talk shit. Because that's what Kendrick was calling him out on. When he kept on saying. Drop a 50 bag for the mob on the spot. Drop a 50 bag 29 for the thought. So when you start talking that mob shit. That's where people are not going to really take it seriously. But then. I like he's also said, good kid, mad city van, well pop the latch and make the door slide. Tears running down my cheek, laughing at you pussy drying, it's a war cry. Weekend music getting played in all the pots where the boys got a little more pride. Let me get a use of Ferrari for a rapper. Take the nigga on a high horse. Anything to take the spotlight off the face of a boss. It's a drugged out little sissy from the north side. Rakim talking shit. He ain't talking about Rakim the rapper. He talking about Rakim ASAP Rocky. He said, Rakim talking shit. Gas cause you hit my baby mom first. Nigga do the math who I was hitting then. I even know 
who you rap because they even know who you fitting again. Probably got to have a kid again before you even drop a drop a shit again. Even when you drop, they're going to say you should have model because it's mid then. God dang. Drop kick that nigga right out the ring before he even got in. Then he mentioned, he said, K-Dot shit is only hitting hard when Baby Kim put his pen on it. Now, he's implying here that Kendrick Lamar had Ghost Riders. Then he's he's calling out Raw, saying Raw's calling me white boy, and that shit kind of got a ring to it, because all these rap rappers waving white flags while the whole fucking club sing to it. Murder scene on your man tonight, then come to a vigil with a candlelight. Hey, Kendrick just opened his mouth. Someone go hand him a Grammy right now. Where is your uncle? Because I want to talk to the man of the house. Dope line right here because he said on one of the songs on, um, I think it was called Auntie's Diaries, where his uncle came out as a transsexual. So he's calling his uncle the man of the house. Good play on words, I might add. That's a good play of words. Then he's implying that you called the Tupac estate and begged them to sue me and, and get that shit down. So strong accusations. So overall, this was a good response. I could tell he took his time with it. But once again, Kendrick Lamar, man, very strategic. See, one thing I learned about rappers and a lyricist. A lyricist is very strategic in how he moves. He strategically released this response record right before Drake could take a victory lap. Because what he wanted to do, he wanted this to shine and be played through the weekend so that he could take the shine off Kendrick. Kendrick released this response record called Meet the Grams. And it's like he's writing a letter to his son. Disrespect to the utmost. He said, Dear Adonis, I'm sorry that that man is your father. Let me be honest. It takes a man to be a man. Your dad is not responsive. I look at him and wish your grandpa would have wore a condom. Good God almighty. This is getting personal, yeah. I'm sorry that you got to grow up and then stand behind him. Life is hard. I know the challenge is always going to be this home. Sometimes our parents make mistakes that affect us until we're grown. Good God Almighty. Oh, it gets worse from there. He said, Dear Dennis, you gave birth to a master manipulator, even using you to prove who is a big, who is a huge favor. I think you should have asked for more paper and more paper and uh, more paper. I'm blaming you for all of his gambling addiction, psychopath intuition. Oh, my God. Your son's a sick man with sick thoughts. I think niggas like him should die. Him and Weinstein should get fucked up in a cell for the rest of their life. He hates black women. He hypersexualized them with kinks of a nymph nympho fetish. Oh my god. Grew facial hair because he understood being a beard just fit him better. Are you serious right now? This whole record is violation, bro. This is a total violation. He said, I've been in this industry for 12 years. I'm going to tell you. One secret to any woman that's playing his music, knowing that you playing your sister or better, you selling your nieces to the weirdos, not the good ones. Cat Williams said, get you the truths, so I'm going to get mine. Damn, embassy's about to get raided, too. It's only a matter of time. Hey, LeBron, keep the family away. Hey, Curry, will you keep the family away? To anybody that embody the love for their kids, keep the family away. This is getting personal y'all and notice this in the in the later part of the song he turns up the disrespect he turns up the disrespect on the radio song on the song he said 37 but you showing up as a seven year old you got gambling problems drinking problems pill popping and spending problems bad with money poor how solicited women problems therapy's a lovely start but i suggest some i lose <laughs> strip the ego from the strip to the bottom I try to emphasize with you because I know that you have been through nothing. Crave entitlement but want to be light. So bad that it's puzzling. No dominance. Let's recap when you didn't fit in. The skin that you're living in is compromised and personas. Can't channel your masculine even when you're standing by next to a woman. You are body shaming. You got to hide the baby's mama, ain't you? Oh, my God. Whew. Let me tell you all this, y'all. 
and I'm saying this with all seriousness. These niggas ain't working together no more. That relationship they had is done. Them days where they came out doing songs and stuff, doing the Poetic Justice records and stuff like that, them days is done. These niggas can't stand each other. And it's showing right here. And I don't think, and I hope that their crews don't get involved, but considering the lines of the levels of disrespect that's been trans- transparent here, we're beyond that. We're beyond that at this point. I don't see these guys doing nothing together anymore. But you know what's crazy if you really look at this? This started 10 years ago because Drake was in his feelings. If Drake would have just answered the call with Kendrick Lamar when he just said, I want to battle you niggas on the control verse, and just being respectful and be like, okay, let me just step my bars up. Let's just do a song. Because Pusha T understood the assignment. ASAP Rocky thought it was a compliment. He didn't just name Drake out there, but Drake was the only one in his feelings about it to this day. So if Drake would have took a humble approach instead of a sensitive approach, these two probably still would have been cool, but we never know. So that's my breakdown of the two songs right there. I mean, World War Three is, is officially upon us. The civil rap of hip hop. Let me know what you guys think. Subscribe at the like button. Peace.